Welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's time for us to look at the papers. What are the papers saying this morning? Jide Johnson joins us this morning. Jide, good morning and thank you for joining us. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be with you, Messi and Kofi. Thank you for having me and good morning to our listeners, all over, our viewers all over the world. All right, then uh, let's start off with the Punch newspaper. The Punch talks about our budget and its deficit, 10.7 trillion budget deficit. Government may sell TBS, NIPPS, 25 key assets. No bidder yet. We have register of assets, the BPE is saying. Federal government eyeing NMPC, value estimated at over 30 trillion naira. Just imagine you have 30 trillion naira. You probably would uh, buy of, you know, the NMPC. Government must be transparent in sale process, says expert. So we're probably considering, you know, that option as a way of generating revenue. I'm still on the issue of revenue. We have lost the most valued crude oil buyers. That's what the federal government is saying. The likes of China probably is moving away and what have you. Amcon sells uh, or sells, uh, that's, uh, that's not it. For, for, for the want of publicity, we'll move away. Domestic airlines reject Nigeria, Ethiopian deal. That's national carrier and Kanu. A fight reeks, federal government tells Supreme Court. Still looking at the Punch newspaper. Youths demand justice. Please tag us protesters. Hashtag enters the anniversary. There's a pictorial representation of what happened yesterday. Inflation. Nigeria orders rigs political instability, says IMF. That's the International Monetary Fund. Uh, that's a lot for us. I think Nigeria is really going through a lot. 13 died in Ogun. Lagos crash. FRSC blames night travel. Kogi gets first derivation allocation as oil producing state. Now that, you know, our customers are leaving us, who will we be selling to? That's the much we can take this morning on the Punch newspaper. All right, let's go quickly to the nation. Uh, interesting um, stories on the front page of the nation. At least uh, the lead is not uh, on the PDP crisis, as we can, <laughs> we've been used to. Um, well, this one says federal government holds deduction of CBN's loans to states. Uh, NEC raises panel to review budget support repayment terms. I saw the vice president in that virtual NEC meeting. Uh, they had to brainstorm on how to handle uh, states' repayment of the loans that were given by the CBN or federal government. You know, by extension. We have more stories from the part of the nation. U.S. plans uh, $1 million humanitarian aid for flood victims. U.S. plans $1 million humanitarian aid for flood victims. All right, so we're still de de relying on these guys. Uh, stop your blackmail, speakers tell Omar Gege. Nigeria to launch Africa's first payment card. January, CBN, Amcon, announced sale of Polaris Bank. 45 days after UK Prime Minister Truss quits, uh, police, why we dispersed NSAS protesters, um, NDDC gets acting MD uh, board, all right, and um, 10 pounds to death, burned to death in Legacy Banner Expressway explosion. Really sad. APC presidential aspirant Spark Tinubu says Adamu. Stage set for campaign, cancel launch, candidate unveils action plan uh, today. Federal government will tolerate strikes during transition period, Ngige warns unions. All right, um, stories on the front page of The Nation. Away from The Nation, the Daily Trust uh, is what we're looking at. Custom sack over 2,000 officers for corruption. Hamid Ali is quoted, expresses concern over meeting Three trillion naira target to raise one hundred and seventy-six billion dollars after total automation of operation. Justified tax increase on vehicles. Nigerians are going through a lot. Federal government appeals judgment acquitting Kanu and strategic capital investment acquires uh, Polaris Bank for one point three five trillion naira. United Kingdom to elect new prime minister October. 28 as trust resigns.
Corruption high on the Buni Committee, Adamu is saying. Federal government to privatize Ajakuta Steel, minister, is quoted. And uh, 10 bond to death as tanker explodes on Lagos Ibado Expressway. Very unfortunate. And that's it this morning on the Daily Trust newspaper. And the last paper we have on our table is The Guardian, uh, which is uh, conscious, they say they are conscience nurtured by truth. I like that. But the lead story on the front page of The Guardian, Nigeria Air revs on excess budget, doubtful partnership model. Um, it's no controversy surrounding this Nigeria Air uh, idea. The rather to that, only Ethiopian Airlines, so Ethiopia Airlines, bid for new national carrier. Our 49% ownership controlled by foreign interest will rob Nigeria of Basa rules or roots rather. Stakeholders, stakeholders, it's another private interest masquerading as national carrier. Project to mimic Virgin Nigeria's mistake. Uh, lots of controversy there. Can president dissociate itself from APC presidential campaign list? <laughs> Trust resigns 45 days after 45 days. As UK Prime Minister, tragedy is 10 die, five vehicles burnt in Ogun tanker explosion. Uh, Alaba market leaders confirm three deaths, 28 injured persons in clash with Agberos. Um, and there's a big story, investigative piece there by The Guardian. A mental disorder, how economic security uncertainties, COVID-19 fuel numbers and they have a picture of the federal neuropsychiatric hospital Yaba Lagos they say it's a big story for today it seems that uh, more people are turning themselves in for treatment because of the aforementioned reason it's uh, really worrying and uh, finally from the Guardian lessons of answers not learned two years on citizens tell government. We're bringing Jilly Johnson at this point. Jilly Johnson is a senior lecturer at the Nigerian Institute of Journalism. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Let's talk list trust. And most of the papers are carrying uh, that story, um, like The Guardian on its front page, which says that she has resigned 45 days uh, after as Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. What are your thoughts on this, yeah, yeah. Yes, especially well, this, this is the this, this is the quickest. This is a country that has, history. that has established political institution, well established process and procedure on how government should run, and that's why you could see and where the actors and players in the political space have some measure of dignity, because if you have brought that same scenario had played outside of United Kingdom, say in Africa, I'm sure she will still cling to power. But there you have institutions, you have structures, you have the 1922 committee, you have ministers, you have processes through which you can trigger the resignation of the prime minister and the processes through which you can elect a new leader. Well, as far as uh, I am concerned, this is um, nothing coming as a surprise because I followed the trend when Boris Johnson resigned and then um, the context was between the trust and it was narrowed down to trust and Rishi Sunak. Uh, from all purposes and intent, I was, I was, I was, I was sure that uh, Rishi Sunak had a better template. He even had better support among the legislature, among the members of the parliament he had more, more supporters, but left alone to the membership of the Conservative Party, the stress was able to pull the leadership, the leadership stunt, where she won the, she won the race, but does she have the capacity to govern? And it's evidently clear through her policy flip-flop that she does not have the capacity to, 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 to govern. And we see, um, without any major, um, chaos within the system that new prime minister will be elected on the 28th of October. These are the kind of system we want to have we want to have in, in, in our polity in the sense that quickly you can bring to an end an unpopular government and then a popular government can, can be elected through democratic means and processes and procedures that are provided for in the constitution, political norms and the convention of 
that given society. And that's why some of us have advocated that we should go back to parliamentary system of government. Now, I cannot imagine this administration being in power for eight years if you had operated the parliamentary system of government. Because a vote of no confidence and something of this nature will have brought an end to an unpopular government in a parliamentary system of government. Some might argue that it's chaotic because uh, within this year alone, there's the, the likelihood, it's not even the likelihood, we are going to have three prime ministers for, for Great Britain, Boris Johnson, Liz Truss, and whoever he emerges as the new leader of the Conservative Party, who automatically becomes the Prime Minister of Great Britain. Hmm. All right. Uh, uh, um, there's, a funny, there's a funny side to this, Mercy, and uh, um, someone put a webcam on a lettuce when uh, uh, Liz Truss was uh, appointed Prime Minister, and uh, was, was, there was a debate that that, web, that lettuce was going to last longer than uh, Liz, Liz, Liz Truss. And indeed, the lettuce lasted longer than her in office. We had to tune yeah, it, to to it was a live stream to watch the lettuce. You know, it's it's, it's no, it it's, was it was it was clear if you followed the one. She was part and parcel of Boris Johnson's administration. She stayed to the last moment. Whereas Rishi Sunak was actually the person that triggered the collapse of Boris Johnson's government by resigning. Now, Rishi Sunak. Like I said, it's of Indian heritage. There are a lot of identity that played critical role in, in our election in, in us killing the order ahead of or ahead of Rishi Sunak. So it was it was evidently clear that one, she does not have the capacity, two, she does not have the know-how, three, she does not even have the support of the membership. Because in 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 the election that was done within the membership of the Conservative Party in the British House of Commons, Sunak had more members supporting him until the election was meant for the old, mem for the old members of, of Conservative Party across Britain to vote for that election. So it was clear that she was an unpopular leader from the onset. Okay. Uh, Jide, let's come home and talk about Nigeria on the punch. Yeah. Uh, the government is, you know, saying that they may actually sell the TBS, NI, PPS, 25 key assets. As a matter of fact, the federal government is eyeing uh, NNPC, and it's been valued, estimated over 30 trillion naira. What are your thoughts? Now, in the, now they said they want, because they want to meet up with the 10 trillion budget deficit. So they want to sell. If they sell all this asset this year, what are they going to sell next year? Now, why would an administration that has got into the to the tree light of the administration, the end of the administration is inside? This administration has less than has less than nine months. Is it up to nine months? This administration actually has seven months to go. Because by May 29 next year, we'll have a new administration. So why should it wait towards the tail end of its of, of his of his tenor for them to think of selling an asset. Now, if you relate that same story with the botched Nigerian here uh, conversation, are you sure that we don't want to see the transfer of national asset into individual hands? I think that um, the National Assembly should halt this process, and I think that well-meaning Nigerians that are in the legal profession can approach the courts and ensure that this process does not see the light of the day. Because who now on the on, let's talk about NNPC. How transparent we are that NNPC with fun fair and 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 drums and all of it, we saw that NNPC has been privatized. You and I can lay our hand on any document that explains the privatization of NNPC. After a while, we discovered that NNPC has acquired um, has acquired con was it con oil or ando? I can't recall now. Has acquired um, um, one of these companies. Yet we can't lay our hand on the document that explains it. Now they would what they do actually is to test the waters. They will throw these stories via the media to test the pulse of the public to see whether the public will accept or. Will, will be in favor of it 
or will be so they are testing public opinion to see what will be the reaction of Nigerians. But as far as I'm concerned, they are just playing to the gallery. Some people are trying to play smart. They want to sell national assets to themselves, and in the process, Nigeria will be shortchanged. Nigerians well, they, uh, will be shortchanged. The ten trillion naira deficit is not a fluke. So uh, what happens? Really, what, how do we well, solve the problem? Well, we should cut. If, if you want to do that, we should cut wastages. We should cost wastages in our recurrent expenditure. The best way to do that is to look at your recurrent expenditure. If you want to buy 1,000 cars before you reduce it to 200. If you want to spend, uh, I'm just saying hypothetically, you want to spend 2 billion on national rock, reduce it to 200 million. You and I, we live within our means. The inflation, we have a double. We have a double-digit inflation, and yet, as our salary increased in our various offices, an average Nigerian knows how to manage his resources better than people that we have elected in government to manage our national treasury. Each and every Nigerian is managing his life despite the inflation, the double-digit inflation, and yet he does not have any other means of income apart from the salaries and wages. So what are we saying? So if individuals can manage their life in the face of this inflation, why can't government? You have a lot of wastages in government. A lot of wastages. So they should cut their recurrent expenditure. What have we got to show for all of this budget they've been passing since all, since, since all this? Now, if they sell national theater, they sell, uh, they sell, they sell national theater, they sell... TBS, they sell, which invariably we need. We, we, there are some heritage you don't sell. But there are some you need to. When Atiku was campaigning in 2019, and he said that there's a need for an NPC to be, he was really good. All right, uh, thank it's you, Jimmy Johnson. He seems to have run out of words for that situation. And we go back to the Guardian. Uh, you know, it's it's given its major uh, space to the Nigeria air situation, and I think maybe we can also put a lettuce <laughs> somewhere to see if it will last longer than the Nigeria air. But um, the paper thinks that uh, the, the 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 airline, which is still on paper is a, a reps on excess so it's revenue and excess budget and uh, a doubtful partnership model it calls it a doubtful partnership model that um, agreement to in principle to have uh, ethiopia air manage nigeria air um, and that they said it's the only uh, bidder or the only bid they had was from ethiopian air um so what are your thoughts because um the only simply yes. thing if you only simply thing and you understand the word simply thing don't learn from the past. Let me put it in proper perspective. Only fools don't learn from the past. You know, um, I could see from that report where a reference was made to Nigerian Virgin Partnership. We had that approach, we failed. Why do we use the same template that has not worked? No matter how hard you try to go on the wrong path, you will not get your destination. All you need to do is to is to turn and go backwards to where you are coming from. Sometimes going forward could mean going backwards. So, so, so it, it's clear we have done this in the past. It did not work. Why do we want to do it? And the question I keep asking is, why the desperation? Adi Sirika, the Minister of Aviation, had been Minister of Aviation from inception of this administration. He's from the president's home state. He used to be a junior minister in the first term. Then aviation was taken away from transport and made a substantive ministry. He has not done anything with respect to the aviation sector. You know, we, it's, it's, it's a society that rewards, that rewards, that rewards, um, that, 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 that rewards um, mediocrity. Because on this, you, you remember the launch you remember the logo fiasco? How we went and gave over more than six hundred million to to foreigners to, to 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 design the logo. I have I have I have students in my school. They will design the logo for free. 
Uh, well, G.D. Johnson, uh, let's move away quickly. Uh, looking at the punch again, the federal government is complaining about uh, her loss of most valued customers, uh, talking about crude oil customers, and, and that's also very critical. There's also a complaint that some of these persons are moving away from the consumption of fossil fuel or looking for alternative and also looking for uh, other countries. So this is the issue of you know, oil and gas. How do you react? Yeah, because we are still crude in the way we manage our crude oil. You know the word crude. God, this is the basic form we get the oil that we, we, there's no value addition. There's no value addition to we don't have refineries. We don't have refineries. As a result of that, you can't have petrochemicals companies in Nigeria. Uh, we burn our natural gases, the liquefied natural gases, we, we set it at place. So we only focus on what we can get. You know, some of us have prayed that the crude oil should, should, should dry up so that we can begin to think. Once the crude oil dries up, we can begin to think on how to raise revenue and not to become too reliant on, on crude oil. You see, for every government in Nigeria, crude oil has automatically become their god. Because that's what we rely on. So we have, we have rendered our, our thinking cap and our thinking faculty useless in looking at other means, in looking at ways to diversify the economy. Since I was in, since I was doing my A-levels in the 80s, I've always heard about the diversification, the diversification of Nigerian economy, the diversification of Nigerian economy. We have not taken concrete steps to diversify. We knew when this talk about renewable energy, when the conversation started, we knew the various benchmark and timelines that have been provided by, by the Western world, who happens to be the, our major customers. And yet we didn't take any step to address to address the emerging trends in the energy sector. So we, 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 why, should, why should we not find ourselves in the situation we have found ourselves? And it's because we lack basic planning. Even the one that God has given to us, the crude oil, we still sell it as crude because we are crude in thinking, we are crude in leadership, we are a crude society, a society whereby people will go for, for peaceful protest and you begin to tear gas there. I was sharing, just going over to, to what happened yesterday. What stops government from allowing them? Just provide them with police protection. Let them protest as many times they want to protest. And then the most important thing is that they should not block the right of passage for others that are not protesting. And then you leave, leave them. After they are tired, they will go home. And if they are not tired, they've made their statement. And then you, you it's a win-win situation. But... We have a situation whereby people don't even know how to deal with civil civil disobedience. And in democracy, civil disobedience is allowed because majority will always have their way. The minority must have their say. A critical component of democratic society is the right to protest. So, so what becomes of us now? I'm sure that this would not be the first time that you've heard about uh, diversification or alternative energy, renewable energy, and it's a global conversation. But it's getting very serious, and uh, I, I really don't know if there's any policy direction from us or if we're really sitting up and making plans to ensure that we don't wake up and we're shocked. You see, you always find yourself in this situation where you have a lifestyle that you cannot fund with your income. We have a large go big government we have a big government that leads an ostentatious lifestyle and then we want to fund that lifestyle with mega resources so that's because the question you ask is that why do we have all these ministries departments and agencies of government where they cannot think they can't come up with strategy they can't come up with blueprint on how to transform transform the the, the, the nigerian nation all you need to do is to travel through the lake and breadth of Nigeria. You see the arable lands we have. All you need to do, you need to ask yourself is that is for government to put in place a well-structured system, a system whereby government could collect the appropriate taxes 
from all those that are involved in one form of business or the other in Nigeria. However, the money that should come to government is going to private pocket. The custom board said they sack 2,000. If you have an organization where 2,000 staff are sacked for corruption, then the entire organization is corrupt. And that, and that one of the major body that is responsible for your revenue generation, 2,000, and there's no outreach. All right, uh, Jiri Johnson, uh, thank you so much for your time and uh, uh, for your expert well, analysis. It's always uh, a pleasure to be As you. always, as always, uh, uh, we can feel your energy from here. And, uh, uh, of course, we, we can look, we wait for to have you next time. Uh, Jiri Johnson is a senior lecturer at the Nigerian Institute of Journalism. And he told us today that um, his students could have designed that Nigeria Air logo better and for free. Uh, Jiri Johnson, thank you for your time. Today is the 21st. Of October, and uh, we'll go down memory lane with uh, Today in History. We'll return with the first major conversation. We'll talk about the Lagos International Trade Fair when we return.